so 1,424 years ago, when St. Augustine was sent. By the way, if you can't hear me, please tell me, and I'll, um, we are required to wear our masks. Um, the story of Canterbury Cathedral, I say, begins in the year 597, when St. Augustine was sent from Rome by Pope Gregory the Great with 40 Benedictine monks. And he was sent to Kent because um, the whole of the south of England had ceased to be Christian. There had been quite a lot of Christianity when the, in the Roman times, but they would stopped. Um, they hadn't been, either hadn't been allowed to or hadn't wanted to continue. So St. Augustine came here and he came to Kent because the Kent at that time was a kingdom, not a county. And he um, knew that the Queen of Kent was called Queen Bertha, and Queen Bertha was already a Christian. She'd only been allowed to marry King Ethelbert on condition that she was allowed to maintain her Christianity. So he knew that he'd have a warm greeting from at least one person. Mm. Um, so he arrived with his 40 Benedictine monks and was greeted by Queen Bertha. And within probably three or four years, he managed to convert the king. So when he converted the king, everybody was converted. And so about the year 600, this land where we are now was given to the church. And the first cathedral was built here. It was on that side of the nave. It wasn't very long and it wasn't very tall. It was a small building, but it was the first cathedral. And it was made of Roman bricks and tiles and the local stone, which is flint. Because as you probably know, we're only 10 miles from the white cliffs of Dover and you can't build a cathedral of chalk. <laughs> um, so the first cathedral was here between about the year 600 and 1067. Now the date that most British people know in history, if they don't know any other date, they know 1066 which is when William the Conqueror came over from France with Norman knights and conquered Britain. So William the Conqueror, very soon after he'd come here, decided that Canterbury should be the place where there should be a magnificent cathedral and it should be the most important cathedral in Britain. So in 10... About 1070, he ordered the building of the cathedral. And the cathedral is made of 90% of the stone you see around you is from France, from Normandy. It's French limestone. And it's very fine, so it's easy to carve. And it stays where it's put, as you see. Although this is actually one of the more modern bits of the cathedral. This was built between 1360 and 1400, so it's only 600 years old. <laughs> And we will go down into the crypt, which is the oldest part of the cathedral. And I'll show you then. And you can tell the age of the bits of the cathedral by the architecture. Because the first architecture was called Romanesque. It's like the Colosseum in Rome. And it's got rounded arches. And that shows you that that Romanesque architecture is the oldest part of the cathedral. Then they decided that perhaps they could build arches that weren't completely round but had a little point at the top and that's called early gothic and we've got some of that too and then as you go on they decided that they didn't need to have just a little point they could actually make really quite a sharp point and the whole place wasn't going to fall down and it still hasn't mm -hmm. so if you look around you at this this is called perpendicular gothic this style of architecture and i've seen in various books that sometimes this is called the tree of heaven. You see this is the tree trunk and if you look to the sides you can see what look like branches and that was the, the idea of the perpendicular gothic. Um, I told my American visitors that uh, we have to change the roof every 200 years um, because after 200 years the roof is made of lead and the roof is so soft that after 200 years it's thicker at the bottom than it is at the top. So it ceases to be waterproof. So we take off the, the lead 
re-smelt it and put it back again um, because old lead is better than new lead. And while we got the roof off, we checked the rafters, the battens, the stonework, the glass, and everything is done by hand and it's done correctly, not quickly. Mm -hmm. So this, this roof that you see here is about, it's been there about 18 months or two years. It's nearly finished. And then that, the roof is done for another 200 years. Because we started at the east end. Um, as I said, if you look behind you, you can see the central window is a figure without a shirt on at the bottom. It's a man who looks as if he's wearing a loincloth and he's having to work for his living. That is Adam. That is the, the, the beginning of a family tree going from Adam up to Joseph, with Mary and Joseph. And that was ordered by the monks who were here about 1170. No, yes, 1170. Because that window that you see of Adam is the oldest window in the cathedral. That was made in 1176. So it's 850 years old. Mm. It's in a different position than it was originally. I'll show you where it was first. But it is, that is the oldest window in the cathedral. And they have a series of 86 windows which were showing the family tree. So next to Adam is Seth, his, son, his third son. And I'll show you some other windows as we go on. Right, we're now going into the crypt. You'll notice the crypt has rounded arches. It's the oldest part of the cathedral. It was built between 1070 and 1140. And you can see, I'm not allowed to speak at this end of the, the crypt because that's for private prayer. But as we go in, you'll see, I'll, show, I'll point out on the left-hand side, there's the tomb of Archbishop Morton. Archbishop Morton is lying in his robes of office, and he's surrounded by little angels, but they've got no heads. And round the side of the tomb, there are saints with no heads, because those were destroyed in 1642. In 1642, it was in the middle of our English Civil War, which was the king against Oliver Cromwell and Parliament. And on, on Oliver Cromwell's side, there were Puritans, and Puritans believed you shouldn't have pictures of saints with angels. So they destroyed them. They destroyed windows, which is why there are lots of blank windows here. They destroyed paintings, and they destroyed um, sculptures. So look round the edge of the tomb, and you'll see saints with no heads. You'll see an eagle with no head. The eagle represents St. John. And then you, but you will see there is one saint who has a head. It's St. Christopher. Because St. Christopher looks after travellers. And the Puritans didn't come from Canterbury, so they had to get home. <laughs> right, do be careful of the steps.